turn with you and read a few verses from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter, 40, chapter 43. Isaiah, chapter 43, and uh, we want to read from verse number 1. Isaiah 43, it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee. O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. It's a very interesting chapter, but we'll finish there at the third verse. I'm sure that you would agree with me this morning that life is unpredictable. It's unpredictable, to say the least. Things can change so quickly. Things happen that changes the situation around. And sometimes things are going well, and there's no worries and no problems uh, on the horizon, and yet out of the blue, something happens and things change. A problem uh, a sickness, a bereavement, so many things can happen. And when we come to those times in life, to those valley experiences when we're brought down from the hilltop, there are certain portions and texts of Scripture that we would automatically turn to. For example, when we're having a, maybe a difficult day or a hard time, we may so down and read the 23rd Psalm that tells us about the shepherd who cares for his own and watches over them and provides and protects and is even with them in the valley of the shadow of death. Or we may turn to that great Psalm 46. When we're in trouble of some kind, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and so on. Or we may turn to some of the promises of God about prayer, where we read how that God hears and answers the prayers of His people. Be anxious for nothing, says the apostle, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the God of peace my shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we come into the New Testament, you remember the Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples on one occasion, and he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. You believe also in me. And of course, there's times when we have troubled hearts, and the Lord says to you, as he says to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe. You, you believe in God. Believe also in me. Or we may come to that great passage that invigorates us and stirs us up from our, our time of, of anxiety or problems or whatever it is where we read about the Lord's return, how that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And you know how that goes on, and it finishes with these words, wherefore comfort one another with these words. You know, our God is a God who comforts His people, who wants to comfort His people. And here we come to one of these passages here this morning, here in Isaiah chapter 43. And my, the Lord here is speaking to His people. It says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee. And the first thing you see here that God is seeking to comfort his people, and you'll notice the one who's speaking. Now thus saith the Lord. It's the Lord who's speaking, 
And you see, to whom he's speaking? He's speaking to his people. He says, Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. So here is the Lord, and he's speaking to his people. And remember this, that Israel are God's special people. My, they're God's chosen people. They are an elect people. Remember, God called them out and gave to Abram a promise way back there in Genesis chapter chapter tw- uh, 12, if you want to turn over to it. Just keep your finger where you are. And it says here in verse 1, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So here is the Lord, and he's speaking to his special people. They're his own people. And Israel are not only God's special people, but remember that they're God's sanctified people. Israel has always been set apart for God. My set apart from all the nations that surrounded them. You remember he commanded them that they were not to intermingle, they were not to intermarry, they were to be separated unto him. Israel are God's special people, and they're God's sanctified people. And of course, Israel are God's suffering people. God's suffering people. They've always been a suffering people right from their inception. One thinks of their sufferings at the hands of the Egyptian taskmasters. One thinks of their sufferings my, at the hands of the nations that surrounded them, the Philistines, the, the Amalites, the Amorites, and so on. One thinks of their sufferings. You remember when they sinned, and God allowed the Assyrians to come and take them into captivity, and then he allowed the Babylonians to come and take them into captivity for 70 years. And Israel, my, they were always a, a suffering, a suffering people. And we could go on and see their sufferings outside the Bible as we come down through the generations. And here in Isaiah 43, God is seeking to comfort his suffering people. And he seeks to bring them assurance in their time of suffering. And he says, Now thus saith the Lord that created thee. You see, he speaks about their creation. He brought this nation into being. We've already read there from Isaiah, or from Genesis chapter 12, and going back to it just for a moment, uh, we find that it says in in verse 3 of that chapter, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And God says to them, Listen, I created you. I created you. I brought you into being. And he says to them, Further than that, he says, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, And he speaks to them not only about their creation, but about their formation. Remember that God gave Abraham a son in his old age. When Isaac was born, he was a hundred years of age. Abraham was a hundred years of age. God had promised him that seed. And then you remember how that... that, uh, Esau and Jacob, Isaac, married Rebekah, and he gave to them twins. And Esau and Jacob was born, and from Jacob, and sometimes God uses the name Jacob when he speaks of his people, but Jacob had twelve sons, and from these twelve sons came the twelve tribes of Israel, and 
the, uh, the nation of Israel was being formed. It was being formed. And it's still with us today. And I believe that there's a future for Israel. I know that there's a whole lot of people don't, but I believe that there's a future for Israel. So God says to them, listen, I created you, and I formed you. Fear not. Fear not. You see, he's seeking to comfort them. He's seeking to ease their fears in the midst of all their sufferings. That's consolation, isn't it? It's a very timely word for the people of God, people of God of many enemies. He sought to destroy them. My, that many storms and trials to go through and difficulties to face, and fear is something that comes to all of us because we're human. Doesn't matter how big you are or how broad your back may be. My, the fact of the matter is we're human beings at best, and fear comes to us in so many different ways. And throughout the Bible, the Lord comes and He draws near to His people in different situations, and He whispers into their ear, Fear not. He says, I created you, and I formed you. Fear not. And then He gives them the reasons why they should fear not. He says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. And He moves from creation and formation and consolation now to redemption. And he reminds them of how he redeemed them out of Egypt. After being in slavery for 400 years, he reminds them how he brought them out of bondage. He says, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. And he speaks now of identification. The Lord called for them so much that he called them by their name. And he says, listen, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And that's possession. And he's saying to his suffering people, listen, I created you. And I formed you. And I have redeemed thee. And called thee by thy name. And you belong to me. My dear friends, he's pointing out that they were his. And because of this, he brings to them this great word of comfort and this word of assurance in verse 2. He says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. And that's preservation. That's preservation. The Lord says, I created you, and I formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I've called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And he says, because you're mine, I will keep you. I'll keep you. I will bring you through the different situations of life. This is the Lord speaking to Israel, his own people, his own chosen people. But you know, friends, we can apply this to ourselves this morning because we're the people of God. We're God's people today. We are a chosen people, a chosen people a called people. We are the people of God. And the Lord says to you and I this morning, I created thee. We're God's own creation. My, He has made us all different. God has brought us into being. He's the creator. I know that we're living in days when, when many people don't believe in a creator and they don't believe in God, and they don't believe that God is the maker, and that He formed the world, and all the rest of it. But my dear friends, 
The Lord says, I created thee. God created us. And he says, I have formed thee. I have formed thee. You see, the one who, who formed Israel formed you and I in our mother's womb. If you just turn over a page or two there into uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jer Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, and the Lord says to his servant Jeremiah, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Do you know, friends, that's a, that's a mighty word. Yes. My God knew Jeremiah before he was conceived. Before I formed thee in the belly, he says, I knew you. And I had set you apart to do a work for me. We live in a day and age when we hear a great deal of talk about abortion. A great deal of argument about it, even in political circles, particularly here in our own land. And you know, I know that there are situations and times when they, to preserve the mother's life that the child has to be aborted. I know that. But way back in 1967, an act was brought through Parliament by Sir David Steele to legalize Abortion that has been amended a number of times since that. But what we're talking about, friends, if we want to be real, we're trying to have introduced abortion on demand. A young woman goes out for a night, has a few drinks. A few weeks' time, she's pregnant. She doesn't want to keep the baby. There's a whole lot of talk about the rights of the mother, but what about the rights of the child? And I would say, taking politics out of it, that on the basis of God's Word and what Jeremiah says here, that no man or person or organization has the right to destroy that which God has created. Because God forms that child in the mother's womb. He is the creator. And when you look into the cot, into the carry cot, you see something that God has formed, that God has brought into being. And who has the right to put their hand against it? God says, listen, I created thee, and I formed thee. He says, fear not. Fear not. Yes, he says to you and I this morning, fear. I don't know what your fears are. Maybe they're fears of the future, or fear of sickness or disease, or fear for the family as they grew up into this world, or whatever it is, or fear of loneliness. There's so many different fears that comes to us Dear friends, this morning, the Lord is saying, Listen, I have created thee, I have formed thee, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have redeemed thee. He reminds us of redemption, that he sent his Son into the world to redeem our souls from destruction, that Christ went to Calvary and died on the cross, that he might set us free from the bondage of sin. This word redemption carries with it the thought of the pawn market or the pawn shop. Way back in the, particularly the days of the Second World War, the pawn shop was a very, a very important place in any town or village. Someone needed to pay a bill or someone was having a tough to provide for the home, and they take some article, some 
piece of furniture or some bit of jewelry, and they bring it down to the pawnbroker. He gives them a price for it and puts it into pawn. If they wanted to get that piece of jewelry or that item of furniture back again, they had to go back again within a certain time to the pawnbroker and pay him the price they paid plus the interest. And the whole idea was they were redeeming that article out of pawn. And you know, we were created by God, but we were lost in sin. And my, the Lord sent His Son, His only Son, down into this world. And there on Calvary's tree, He paid the ransom price for sin that He might redeem our lives from destruction. And we can say this morning that we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And the Lord says, listen, I created you, and I formed you, and I have redeemed you. And he says, My, I have not only redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. You know, the Lord, he knows the names of the stars. It says, He knoweth the number of the stars, and calleth them all by their names. There are stars in the universe that have never been discovered yet, but the Lord knows their names. And He knows the names of the sheep. He knoweth His own. He calleth His own sheep by name. And He knoweth the name of the saints. In this world, this morning with so many millions, maybe billions of people who know the Lord, yet the Lord knows your name. He knows your name. He says, I've redeemed thee. I've called thee by thy name. <clears throat> and then he says, thou art mine. You belong to me. You're mine. You're my son. You're my daughter. My dear friends, that's possession. And he says to us, My, because I created thee and formed thee, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I've called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And then he says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. He says, I haven't done all this to, to lose you. When I pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. You know, friends, the Lord is just seeking to, to give us that assurance this morning. But no matter how difficult life may become, or no matter how disappointment may come into our lives, or no matter what we may have to face, whether uh, there are problems or sickness or whatever, he says, listen, because I've done all this for thee, I will be with thee. I will be with thee. These things will not overflow thee, because you belong to me. You know, there's two things we see here in verse 2. There's water and fire. When thou passest through the waters or the deep waters, the deep waters, when thou passest through the fire, so we see floods and we see, we see fire. We see the furnace. Remember in uh, chapter 49 of Isaiah, it says, when they the enemy comes in like a flood tide. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. My, we see here the floods of life and the furnaces of life. You know, in the floods of life, the Lord says, I will be with thee. I'm sure we've seen 
Recently, the hurricanes that have swept across the Caribbean and the Southern Hemisphere, and, and my, how these, furnace, uh, they, they, these hurricanes bring with them floods, and floods carry everything before them. They carry boats from the seashore into the middle of the town. They carry cars for miles. They sweep houses away. They just come and, and, and take everything before them. You know, sometimes, friends, there's a flood tide that comes into our lives. It may be a flood tide of sorrows or a flood tide of sickness or a flood tide of need or whatever, and one could go on. And the Lord is seeking to comfort and assure his people. And he says, listen, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. He's assuring them of his presence in the midst of the flood tides of life. He's assuring them of his preservation. When thou walkest through the river, it shall not overflow thee. And he's assuring them of his protection. He says, when thou passest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Remember that storm we read about in Acts chapter 27, when Paul was being taken to Rome to appear before Caesar, and that storm called Eurocladon came, and my, they saw neither sun nor moon for many days. They lightened the ship. They did everything they could, but all hope was taken away that they would be saved. And Paul comes and he stands in the, in the midst of them. He says, listen, there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Dear friends, in the flood tides of life, the Lord says, I will be with thee. You'll not be on your own tomorrow or the next day. In the furnaces of life, the furnaces of affliction and persecution. Remember, Paul talked about affliction that he had, a thorn in the flesh, and sometimes people become ill and they're left with an affliction they never fully recover from. They're like that for the rest of their life. You remember how Paul talked about the affliction he had? And he says, you know, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Not only are there afflictions, but there's persecutions. We're going to live for God in these days in which we live. If we're going to identify ourselves as a follower of Jesus Christ, then my, we're up for persecution. And all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Someone else, something else I want to note here just before I, I finish this morning. You'll notice that the little word through is in verse 2 three times. When thy passes through the waters, when thy uh, passes through the rivers, when thou walkest through the fire. That just lets us know we're not staying there forever. Maybe you're having a tough time these past few weeks or these past few months. Well, I tell you, friends, there's light at the end of the tunnel. God will not leave you there forever. He'll not leave you there forever. He'll bring you through. My dear friends, the Lord says to us, his people this morning, Listen, life is difficult at times. Life is unpredictable. Sometimes there's suffering we have to endure of so many different kinds. But he says, listen, I created you. And I formed you. Fear not, for I've redeemed thee. And I know you by name. I know your very name. And you belong to me. You belong to me. Not only for time, but for all eternity. And I'll always be there when you need me. 
and I'll bring you through the waters and through the rivers and through the fire and I'll bring you safely through to the other lake, to the other side. May God help us in these days and in this world in which we live to remember these great truths and these great promises and know that we have a heavenly Father this morning who cares for us and who watches over us. May the Lord bless his word.